Hi, I'm Mash Ponigala, brand strategist at Spellbrand. Welcome back to the series on the hero's journey. In this series, we're talking about the hero's journey from a historical perspective, but we're also aligning with your audience journey for your business, for your brand, and what to do in each stage of that journey to create emotional bonds with your audience and of course ultimately to to garner their loyalty in this step we're talking about the refusal to call to adventure you will you will notice that in a lot of the stories when the hero is called to adventure initially they sort of refuse they don't want to go on that adventure now if you look at it from your audience perspective uh, or, or even from the story perspective. It's because the hero is in living in an ordinary world, and even if they have pain points, there is a certain level of a comfort zone. They are living in, in the confines of a certain set of rules, and change threatens their kind of security. And therefore, most people refuse to go on an adventure. But when you look at our audience, right, it doesn't need to be epic. It could be a simple thing, a very, very simple thing. As we go through all these videos and we're looking at all these steps, the hero's journey traditionally, of course, has this epic grandeur to it. But always bear in mind that our customers, small things can be journeys, right? Small things that our products, our services are solving can still be journeys, epic journeys. If you look at this refusal to call to journey. Now, if you look at, for example, in terms of Lord of the Rings, the refusal comes when Gandalf gives the ring to Frodo and says, take it out of the Shire, right? Because you have to save the world. Now, Frodo is reluctant. He's like, what, me? No. First of all, he doesn't want to leave the comfort of the Shire, um, his ordinary world. And secondly, he does not think that he is so great as to save the world. And of course, he's afraid. If you look at Star Wars, after Obi-Wan Kenobi listens to the message uh, from Princess Leia, he tells Luke that they need to go to the planet Alderaan, right? To help the resistance. And he says, you have to help with the resistance. And Luke is like, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to be a part of the resistance. I, I just want to explore maybe, but I don't want to. So. It is a refusal. In terms of the metrics, Neo, he gets this cell phone FedExed, right? Morpheus sends it to him. He's in his office. He opens it. Uh, it rings. Uh, he starts talking. Morpheus is telling him, if you want to live, listen to exactly what I'm telling you, right? You need to get out of there. You need to get out of the office because people are coming. You're going to be in danger. And he says, he gives him instructions, clear instructions on how to get out. And then Neo reaches this window and Matt, uh, Morpheus says, jump, just jump out of the window. Just trust me and jump. And Neo gets onto the ledge. He hesitates and gets back in and he says, no, no, this is crazy. I don't know who you are. I don't know why you're telling me to jump. And so he refuses that call. And of course, he's, he gets um, arrested by the agents. So when you look at it from your audience perspective, it's the same. They realize that they have this problem, but they have objections to getting on to solve that problem. So these objections could be uh, copywriting services. Let's say you're offering copywriting services to your business clients. Then in the ordinary world, then they, the call to adventure is they wake up sort of, they, they realize that, oh, hang on, the copy sucks on the website, right? Or on the brochure, I need professional copy or I need better copy. But the objections in their in their minds is usually things like, oh my God, it's probably gonna cost me thousands of dollars, right? Or I'll not be able to find the right kind of person that I could trust to write this copy. Because in their minds, in our minds, when we are looking at a new solution, we wanna buy something, we wanna go somewhere, we always mistrusting of the options because that's the way the world has become. The refusal to call to adventure, no, I don't want to go, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, uh, you know, I don't wanna, spend the money or I don't want to get this. I think I can do it myself. Or let me get my uncle's son. You know, he just got out of university. Let him write the copy, right? To save money. Usually saving money is the biggest kind of motivator in the refusal um, for our audience journey. Most people think of a lot of things as expenses, whereas a lot of the key components 
um, that help them solve problems and get better at business or in their lives are investments. Let's say a lawnmower, case of a lawnmower, right? If, for example, their lawnmower, the blades are, you know, getting blunt quickly and they're having to replace the blunts, it's an expense. But if there was an option where they could buy a lawnmower that works differently, but it's expensive, they don't want to make that jump. They don't want, because they say, you know what, it's probably cheaper just to replace the blades than buy the Citroen. But they don't think about the long-term kind of investment. So in your case, look at your customer's objections, right? So that is the action step. Look at your customer's um, objections. So this is based on the buyer persona uh, that we created in the first step. Um, and create at least five customer objections. Try to focus on objections that stem from customer resentment. Right? That's very important. It's good practice to think of the shortcomings of your competitors' offerings too. So if it's a product, look at the products that are out there, what's missing from them. Now, if you are in a homogenous market and if your product or your service has the exact same features as everybody else, think of the objections in terms of the customer's worldview and how can you stand out and, and, and resist those objections. So in this step of the journey, you have to list down the customer's objections and also at the same time how your product or service um, sort of addresses that objection or how your, your pricing may uh, sort of uh, you know, address it. Now remember, this is not selling again. This is We're still not into the selling phase. You're not jumping quickly and saying, listen, ours is the cheapest or, or something like that. No, not yet. What you're really doing here is creating messaging. Uh, it could be blog posts, it could be, I don't know, copy on your website um, that actually talks about the objections from an abstract standpoint. Let's say buying a camera, right? So expensive, you think buying a camera is expensive, but it, it doesn't have to be, right? Explore the different options. So you're essentially, you're kind of providing, you're addressing the objections of your customers from a non kind of product or service perspective, not yet anyway. So that is the third step, which is the refusal, the refusal of the hero to go on this adventure, the same as your audience. The next step of the hero's journey is meeting a mentor. And we will discuss that in the next video. See you.